came together to put together some uh, research and provide some insights um, around retail media. Uh, we and Goodway Group has also done us a special honor of bringing a Retail Media Network guest and Retail Media Award winner on stage with us right now. So please give it up for Angela Myers of Goodway Group and Charlie Charles of Dollar General Media Network. Networks popping up. 
But that number, you know, 38% are increasing to four to six networks versus 32% last year. 47, at, uh, I'm sorry, 46, 46 networks is actually the 47%, up from 34%. At seven plus networks, 38% versus 32%. So clearly that investment is being spread out much farther. And more than four and five brands are actually investing in four plus networks this year versus 66% last year. So that's a lot of change in investment. And I want to take a break and ask Charlene, what are your thoughts on diversification? I have so many thoughts, but before we start, the timer isn't on in the front, and so for me and Angela to kind of know where we're at, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> but overall, as we transition back into the presentation, thoughts, I love the diversification. I think it's so important. When you think of brands and you think of their goals, you want to drive sales, you want to increase ACV, you want more points of distribution. That expandable consumption, you need to invest in all different areas and channels, whether that be trade, shopper, media, and store. And you need to see that happen. You need to set those items up for success. So as someone that works at Media Network, it's very exciting. I think it's great. Awesome. Oh, I forgot this part. The other part, the timer got me. The other part is with so many choices out there, you've got to earn that, that consideration with the customer. This is just a snapshot of our app. I encourage everyone in this room to pick up your phone and download our app if you haven't. This is DG Stories for us. This is just another way that we're engaging with our customer to just ensure that we can help them save money and time and find savings. And so as you think about the right for every retail media network, it's actually an earned right. Brands need to seek you out because you actually have a demand and you have a scalable audience. So where are some of those increased investments coming from? We know that 94% say they're continuing to invest in retail media. When we look at where it's coming from, 47% say that's a mix of new dollars and existing dollars. About 43% say I'm shifting from existing budgets. 10% are saying it's coming from net new dollars. So there are a multitude of ways that the investment is actually coming to fruition. And when we unpack the existing budget sources, you can see that it's coming from a whole host of areas, whether that's a brand budget, a trade budget, media, shopper, e-commerce, etc. So what this tells us is that it is still a very nascent business. It's not established, or these budgets would be a lot clearer than they are. <laughs> So why are brands continuing to invest? Obviously performance is really important, but also things like data insights and quality, scale and reach, reporting capabilities, alignment to branding, cost effectiveness, and actually uniqueness of audience through data, which I think is really important. When you look at this list, what do you think about the importance here? I think so many things, but <laughs> most importantly, People continue to invest because it's working, right? You have one P audience, you have the ability to measure, and you can see outcomes. In some channels, you still have a bunch of fluffy metrics, so that's really important. But when you look further, and you look at the unique audience aspect, when I think of the DG Media Network, I think of our 90 million plus marketable profiles, that we have over 20,000 physical store locations, and we have a rural customer that we know is elusive and is hard to reach. And beyond just stating that, we did conduct research with the trade desk and we're able to understand that over 50% of our audiences aren't even available in third party audio uh, uh, demo segments in total. And so you need to have a reach, there needs to be demand. On the less important side that you share, all of that comes after, analytics, cost, et cetera. Without demand for an audience first and foremost, that is what starts it, and then everything flows after. Yeah. Okay, so we started out with what's happening in the space. It's a conduit. It's driving great collaboration. Everybody's feeling good about it. The investments are there. We're pulling from different areas. It's not established. Some work needs to be done. Now let's talk about confidence in the actual ecosystem itself. And this is where we see maybe a bit of a different story. And so, when we look across all of the metrics that helped us understand this level of confidence, the first is the perceived effectiveness. So only half of those that were interviewed said, 
that they're confident that retail media can increase brand awareness, 40% saying it can help drive sales, and a third for improving long-term value. So not really great when you think about what you want it to do, how effective you want it to be. And only 34% say that retail media networks provide quality data for effective targeting. This is a big gap. Maybe it's perception, maybe it's reality, but there's a tremendous amount of education needed to close that gap. And then market confidence. 20% of the market says they have low confidence in retail media, really highlighting the need for each of the networks to, to highlight their value proposition and their data capabilities. And on the good side, they're saying, hey, they're actually really great at driving traffic and some of the tactical things related to the retail media network. But there are some improvements needed. So it's really a mixed bag in terms of confidence. Digging a little deeper, when we look at overall performance, you can see some of the, the, the top factors here are the more operationally focused areas. The retail media, I feel good about it being able to drive traffic good about the execution of tactics. Um, it's constantly evolving. So there's that recognition that retail media is not quite established. It's still being built. It's still evolving. And so far, maybe easy to work with. But then you have this middle area where you see things like focus on being a, a partner or building, ease of onboarding, responsiveness, lead times, and then incrementality and data sharing. So, the confidence gets lower and lower across how they're rating performance with each of, of these areas. So I have to ask, Charlie, when you look at this, what is your reaction? I don't feel great as a retail media network. There's a lot of opportunity here. I mean, the data speaks for itself, though. It's, I'd like to see more excellent. Um, we do have opportunity, though. Yeah. What can we do about it? Uh, we are not going to solve it today. But I think there are two big things that we can do. When I look at this and I see traffic driving capabilities and tactic execution, uh, we're great at that. I, I agree. We are so good at that. We are so obsessed with the short term. We are thinking, what can I do with 10 KPIs, a frequency goal, a budget of half a million, and five weeks to demonstrate incremental sales? We have an opportunity to evolve. We need to start thinking about the long-term strategy. We need to start thinking about loyalty. We need to start thinking about retail media networks not being a singular tactic, but actually a full funnel solution. Whether you're CTV, upper funnel, lower, lower, lower funnel, the PLA, we need to just think more holistically. So that's a big thing. The second part is we, as a retail media network, and I say this with love, as a former brand person sitting on the other side, need to do a better job of listening. We have the same goals. We are trying to reach shoppers, transform behaviors, engage with brands, and sell more stuff. And the way we do that is having conversations about how we can address your problems and issues. And there's standards out there. There are things published, but we're not all there yet. This is still a new industry in total, and there's a lot of frustrations, as the previous slide hit on. Um, for the network at DG, our mission is media built better. And maybe today you're going to get this presentation later, and you're going to walk through and maybe flip through and find something, but we really encourage you to engage with us, the Good Way Group, with your other partners, even your competitors, to have some hard conversations about how we can improve the landscape for both our customers and our clients. All right, so recapping where we're at. We started, it's a great conduit. Things are looking good in the relationship front. Investments are strong. We're still figuring out where they're all coming from. Confidence is not where we want it to be. So now let's move our attention to the KPIs that we have today to measure success and talk about what an audit framework looks like. And we'll get to the why we need an audit framework over the course of the next few slides. But this session's meeting. So people need it to is know meaty. This one it's a meaty here. section. So let's let's dive. Are we dug in? Yes. Let's dig. Let's dig yes. in. All right. The first thing that we're going to talk about is how brands prioritize retail media networks. They're looking at performance metrics, reaching quality, cost efficiency, and data transparencies as the number one or number one, two, three, four things they're looking at. 
in order to decide where, what that choice is, what that mix is. But what's interesting is we ask this question about how brands look at their retail media budgets and their overall marketing budgets. And man, there was a lot of mess in there, which we're going to get into the, the details of. They'll say it's the high cost that is the number one detractor for integrating the retail media strategy with the, with the brand marketing strategy, followed by lack of budget. So it's focused on the financials. Complexity is the other area. So it's really hard when you have an established brand marketing strategy that you've been optimizing over the course of time based on brand needs, and now you have this retail media strategy which has a lot of similarity but a lot of difference, and it becomes really complex, and that complexity shows through in the research as well. And then there are a lot of KPIs, a lot of expectations about what retail media is supposed to provide, what brands need to determine success or future investment, a lot. It goes so far beyond the, co the cost efficiency, it goes so far beyond performance. Um, and there are some gaps to close between what they're getting today and what they would like to have in the future. So if we dig in a little bit on the most important factors of deciding where to continue the investment, again, I called out those top four, but if we go a little bit deeper, we look at things like, well, I also need to understand technological advancements and integration capabilities across platforms and brand safety and compliance, innovation and ad format, customer support, and then writings on the something else, flexibility, true ROI, competitive targeting, measurement methodology standardization, some of the things that Charlene just talked about. So there's a lot of desire to know more in order to, let's say, justify the investment and also justify the mix of retail media networks that a brand is investing in. Now when we unpack that question that we ask brands about bringing together their overall brand marketing strategy with their retail media marketing strategy, um, how, how those things integrate. We see those financial metrics pop to the top. Great. Feels a little bit like a red hair. When you go deeper and you see all of the other things that are being rated that they were asked about, and then you look at the right end, 16%, highest right end of any question we had in the survey. There's a lot of things that they are saying get in the way of them being able to look at things holistically. Human capital, talent, bandwidth, data transparency and availability, network performance, creative restrictions, long lead times, internal alignment. I would argue that is more of the reason just based on being in the industry and having the conversations that we have. And yes, those financial you know, uh, constraints are important, but all of these other things are also driving the inability for these things to come together, which impacts your planning, it impacts your investment, and it ultimately impacts performance. When asked about what brands are receiving today versus what they want to receive, we see there's some alignment in profit and sales metrics, 76%, 73% say they're getting that today. More say they would prefer to receive that, so there's a desire for more of that. Media metrics, 74% say they're getting. Only 41% say they really prefer to have it. So there's a gap there. Same thing with engagement metrics. 49% say I'm getting those, but only 18% say that they want them. So there are some misalignments in between what brands are getting and what they ultimately want. And these are just some of the bigger buckets, the higher level buckets. So there's clearly a lot of work to be done on the brand side. And this is what gets us to sort of this, how we wrap this up, how we think about using this research. So if we recap what we're hearing in terms of what the needs are, we look at things in sort of this balanced scorecard approach. And when you think about you as a brand or you as a retailer, how you're also looking at the metrics you're either going to provide if you're the retailer or the metrics you want if you're the brand. I would encourage everybody to look at it this way because it's very easy to say all of these things like high cost and or you know, sales and profit are the most, most, most important things, but there are so many other important things. You need to look at things through the lens not only of the financials, but of the customer and how the, the network is as an operator and how your brand, or how you're operating today, feeds into that. And similarly, what the innovation is. And I would, I would, say, I would assume that most have a balanced scorecard approach for their overall brand objectives, but maybe not their RMN objectives, and 
both of these things need to come together in order to align and have the, this become an established industry from what it is today. And so the last thing I'll walk you through is this notion of an audit framework. And I'll say maybe it's simplistic to some of you, but I've been around a long time and there are some things that you just pull out of your pocket that you've used, like a racy. How many people love a racy? I love a racy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they're painful, but they work, right? So similarly, we're saying, hey, we've got some tools here that can help us because on average, brands say they need 15 KPIs. Like, really, 15? Um, for a four-week campaign, do we really, you know, so I think we need to ask ourselves, do we have the right KPIs? Well, so I put in a great perspective when you said, can you imagine if we had 15 objectives on our personal evaluation for work? <laughs> yeah, that's a performance review. Right, that doesn't work either. So it's no, too many. It's too many. So how do you pull that down? Well, you, you put them through the audit framework, and you really pressure test the crap out of them, to be honest. So the first question you ask is, is the purpose of that KPI clear and understood by all? That means the brand, the retailer, the, the agency. If the answer is yes, great. If not, it needs to go. The second, does that KPI have the right criteria to indicate a level of impact? Something maybe numeric like an IRO has with a goal, or perhaps something where you're looking for an increase in, in customer conversion, and you just want to see the increase. Maybe there's not a number. Is everybody aligned on that, that the, the criteria that's being used is the right criteria? If yes, awesome. If not, it needs refined so that it can. The third is, does that KPI criteria score itself or direction, whatever it is, does it prompt an action? If it stops there, you gotta refine it because it's not working. It has to prompt an action. And then does that action facilitate dialogue for change? This is a tough one. I'm sure people think, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen it a lot. No, not enough. And if it's not, then the KPI needs to be refined. And lastly, are the teams set up to respond to the changes that are needed to that KPI? If yes, awesome, it's a great KPI. If not, it needs to be refined. So it may seem a little simplistic, but we're asking a lot of the space, and I think it would help everybody to sort of put that through the framework and say, what do we really need to know? Not only for one individual network, but to really invest properly across the multitude of networks we want to invest in. All right, so to wrap this up, we know that retail media is strong. It's, it's providing great collaboration, great relationships, but we know that confidence is a little bit low. So we have to assess where things are and evolve how we're planning. The second is to know your balanced scorecard. If you don't have one, you should, you should create one, and make sure that they're aligned across the brand objectives as a whole, as well as the RM objectives. And then lastly, audit and adjust, and do it with your partners. Okay, we've landed the plane with six minutes left. Yes, we <laughs> have. And to kind of kick us off, because I'm sure there's so many questions out there, I am actually going to ask Angela's first question because um, it makes me happy. But I do want to know, what is the last thing you bought at Dollar General? So this, this audience can hear. Okay, so first of all, get ready. If you don't have the app, you do need to download it. Um, I have a boy in a bubble. He's 13, he's allergic to freaking everything outside. And so we're constantly buying Zyrtec. The Zyrtec is the best at Dollar General because they're $5 cheaper than the giant food. Sorry if the Avo people are in the room. And they had a coupon for $5 off plus an extra 10 count. I bought that twice. I saved $9 each time, 18 bucks. Boom. <laughs> Very passionate. Um, and I, I mean, we appreciate you greatly. Thank you. So that was kind of our first question to kick things off. Does anyone in the audience have a question? Ooh, we didn't have that awkward pause. We already have one. Hi, I'm also wearing red, so it's kind of this is a sloppy. You're wearing some levels. <laughs> uh, my name's Gita, and I um, I just have a quick question. I have a million uh, heck yeses to this. Um, very big saying, when, we, when I've heard in the industry, in the industry for many years, um, when I hear people talk about brands, knowing you come from the brand marketing world, um, and I 
here, people talk about trade or shop work, there's, it's gotten more complicated. And I think that like with e-com, with brands being referred to, is it in-house brands, is it brands that are receiving trade dollars as a, you know, uh, how do you say it? The MM model check, I guess if you will, but then there's actually a trade company, or the trade and shopper, shopper marketing teams that are buying the media, um, technically. Not all, not in all cases. Like, how do you guys help to sort of standardize some of the language we use? Because I think that is the biggest issue that I've seen is we use language think we know what we're talking about uh, with each other. And people are expertise, or experts in their domains, so this is nothing against anybody here. But it's, it's the clarification of what that means. A brand is important work in my opinion that like, you know, works under the CMO. And then there's shopper that works under the CCO. And I feel like that sometimes it gets, it's completed. I don't know if you guys feel that, and if that was not any intention to <laughs> yeah, to like poke holes in what they're yeah. saying. More yeah. learning from me on how you guys approach those types of conversations and if you agree that that's an issue. I think I think you're what you're saying is validating exactly what the research is saying. And it does have to be solved. But even your perspective, what you just said, that does not exist at every brand. Correct. So there is a lack of standardization in terms of how brands operate, how they budget. And they're kind of to that, yeah. right? Um, but it does make it really confusing to know. And maybe, like, I, I come from old school retail, and I know that some of that is by design. So that you can determine, like, how you get through a negotiation or a JVP in, in a proper sure. fashion, right? So I think there, one, has to be a desire to fix it. But I also think that it's like a twofold issue. Like, what you're talking about is a problem that's been around, but then also retail media has exacerbated it. Yes, because it's just, yeah, it's just, there's so much to choose from. So I don't know the answer, but I know that it, like bubbling it to the surface and saying, it is a problem. Let's define that problem a little bit more. Who benefits, who loses out, and how do we fix it to create something that's far more of a win-win? And I think it's gonna take retailers and brands working together to create some level of transparency in expectation. That to me is the biggest part of transparency. Uh, both sides need to say we don't have it figured out and have conversations and kind of start at the most simple components of what you're trying to do and make sure that everyone is following along. This industry and the space is moving so fast yeah. that, you know, all of us probably could get along in a conversation and say absolutely nothing but sound like we said right. everything. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so but that happens as you talk about the people doing the work, campaigns, all yes. the way up, it gets further and further. I think that happens everywhere, but since the ground under our feet right now is moving so much, it is much more about just taking mindful moments, taking a step back, and just rooting everyone at the beginning. Like, what problem are we solving? I mean, we ask that to ourselves half the time because we're moving so fast on this to make sure everyone truly understands. Yeah, I, I could not agree more. Um, I'm going to stalk you after this to talk about <laughs> 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 How have you seen the e-commerce leaders at the retailer merchants marketing really lean into you on the retail media strategy? How has this evolved in the last three years, three or four years? We have 51 seconds. <laughs> um, so for Dollar General, we are doing some very exciting things. We have partnerships with DoorDash. Um, we've got a lot of things we're doing for e-com, but what's really interesting about us though is with our 20,000 plus stores, convenience is key. So, so many things still happen in store for us. So we're actually doing a lot of exploration and making sure that we can fulfill that trip for them. But we know that their go-to is just their local DG. So we're right in the middle of all of that, having great conversations, figuring out how to earn their engagement, how to keep the app extremely shoppable and make sure that they can see what's in stock, they know what they want, they can discover and get inspired. So that's very much what we're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, folks. 
Is this well, timer correct? Catch Angela and Charlene in the halls here in this room. Uh, if you have more that you want to ask them, I want to thank them so much for a great presentation. Thank you.